health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and a busy mom of three. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you're notified every week with my new podcast on Mondays and Tuesdays. And if you haven't already, join my free group coaching on Telegram with the link below. There is no downside. It's free. I teach you on a daily basis with tips and tools to enhance your health. I ask, answer your questions and you will be a part of a like-minded group to support you on your journey in addition to truly taking control of your health, which is so important these days. My goal is to reach everyone on earth with eyes to see and ears to hear my message of healing. So help me with that goal. Share this podcast with a few of your friends who may need my help. Super excited today. We are talking about longevity and we have Chris Burris back. He is the owner of SES Research, which is the company that owns um, my Vital C that I carry and I take every single day. Welcome, Chris. How are you today? I am doing wonderful, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me back. It's great to see you. Uh, I think this is the shortest time frame that we've so seen each other. Like typically it's a little bit longer, but Absolutely. glad to be back. Well, I'm excited. You have put together a summit on the topic that I am after. I'm, I'm anti-aging, not anti-aging. I'm reverse aging. That's my hope. And I know that is your hope as well. And so you've put together a summit un uncovering the secrets to longevity, live beyond the norms. And I'm a, one of the guest speakers, which I'm super excited. And thank you for including me. So let's get into it. Why did you decide to um, put together this longevity summit? Well, well, first off, of course, I was going to include you in the summit. I actually included you in the book, Live Beyond the Norm. I I'm sorry, uh, Live Longer and Better. Um, you know, uh, really, I've always believed in giving back and I've had kind of different careers in my life and at, at some points have typically done podcasts. And the reason I tend to do podcasts is, is twofold. And the reason that I did uh, the summit is twofold. Um, one is incredibly selfish, which is when I have this goal that I have to accomplish, uh, I have to educate myself and I couldn't be more happy. I worked uh, so hard on this summit. I ended up uh, inter interviewing 55 experts in longevity, including you. Wow. And um, I did it in a short time frame. I was just kind of typing up some notes. I think it was within two months, the week of Thanksgiving, right? So you got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday only. I interviewed nine people. I prepared at a minimum one hour for each of these interviews. And then each interview at least took an hour out of, you know, out of my schedule. That's not even talking about scheduling it and coordinating it and all this stuff. So it was a lot of work. Um, but selfishly, I wanted the opportunity to interview people about their area of expertise, right? Because I can, I can go to your website and I can learn lots of stuff. But then when I can sit down and ask you very specific questions, you know, maybe I'm finding solutions for myself. So the first is it's a, it's a great way to accumulate information. The next is, so, so really there's three. The next is I just always believe in, in sharing and just like you with your TV program, uh, getting that information out to people. And then the final piece is, yeah, I'm interviewing people. Yeah, I'm putting this together and that's kind of selfish. But I don't think you ever really learn information or at least the way you learn information best is by teaching. And so this is going to back into now I'm putting together a course where I can teach people about longevity, which is really going to cement in my own brain. We were talking about protein. I'm on a super high protein diet right now. Um, and a lot of literature is saying that this is the right strategy uh, in, and, and that the kind of older school strategies d just don't don't fit to where we really need to be uh, when you compare, you know, how a young person who's growing processes protein and how we as we get older, by the way, that's just like 30 and up, like even probably even younger than 30, um, how we process protein. So when I get to teach that, then I cement it for myself. And then hopefully I actually implement those things and 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 live longer uh, as well. 
55 people. That is amazing. And as someone who does a podcast, a three, at least three to five a week, um, doing nine in three days is pretty amazing. I'm, I'm impressed, Chris. I really am, especially for someone who is not a host and it hasn't strengthened that muscle. I always talk to my kids about, you don't just strengthen the muscles in the gym. You strengthen your, your social confidence muscles. You strengthen your emotional muscles. Well, you're strengthening your podcast muscles. That is very impressive. And why do you think I do podcasts and interview people like you? It is selfish. I want to learn the information. And then when I am forced to really dive deep into it and do my research and you know, learn from my guests, it cements into me. And then I spew it out to my clients or my customers. And I also filter it through all of the other information that I know and balance it. What, you know, how does this fit in and does it fit in? Or maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's totally right. And that person is going to, going to completely flip me to a different um, mindset. And I love that you're talking about protein because um, keto was huge, right? 2015 was when I went on the bandwagon of keto and that high fat, moderate protein diet. Well, that works for some people. But what we're finding now is most people, because of the spike protein, because of the backed up livers, and that's why, Chris, you got to do my liver flush, um, the radiation and the processed foods, the liver is working so hard and can't do its work. And that's what's accelerating aging. And so we can't, our livers can't process the dietary fat that one would switch to on a high fat ketogenic diet. So now everyone's looking to, okay, so if it's not a high fat diet, if it's not a high carb diet, then it's got to be protein, right? Most people agree that protein is it, prioritize protein. And then you can fill in with the fats or the carbs, depending on your goals or how your body works. And then it's not just about what kind of protein is about what kind of protein you're eating. And uh, we can go into that in a little bit. <laughs> that, that could be a whole nother summit. <laughs> it could be a whole nother summit. And I'm happy to come on that one for you. Um, so long well, let, let me just interject. All right. So, so you've been doing three to five shows, podcasts, whatever, for how long? Oh, gosh. I started in 2000. 19, I believe, but I haven't been doing three to five a week. Um, not until this last year and a half. So year and a half. That's, that's a, that's a lot of commitment. And I don't know if you read, um, Jim Collins book. I can't remember, uh, the title. Uh, it may be like the 20 mile March or something, or at least that's a concept in the book where, where you're just for your business. I'm not, I'm not, you know, it, it was an interesting piece. This is a little segue. It's an interesting piece about they were hiking to Alaska and what people tended to do on good days, they would go as far as they could. And then on bad days, they would just sit still. And his, the concept of the group that actually got there first was we do 20 days. If it's a garbage day, we do like it hurts and we make our 20 miles and then, you know, we, it hurts that night and we wake up and maybe it's a fresh day and we only do 20. We don't overexert ourselves and then we get that rest. And it is that commitment. And it is, I don't think it, this, this my, my recent statement, it, kind of a thought that's been going on really applies to podcasts because, um, because I know you and I really enjoy getting on and interviewing people, but I've been saying that success is extremely boring, right? So I've told the story that's in this book and then I've written the book and then now I'm gonna be promoting the book and I'm gonna be talking about the stories in the book thousands of times and I'm gonna to continue to do that. That is actually relatively boring. I, I enjoy it because it's amazing research. There's amazing science going on and, and that's great and I get to share it with new people. But in fact, if you were just to describe somebody, hey, 2000 times you're going to explain this exact same story. You're like, yeah, that sounds kind of boring. Success is that repetition of those cons those simple, consistent things um, that that are going to move the needle forward. Maybe not today, maybe not back in 19 uh, 2019 when you started, 
but maybe as we go into you know continual growth as we go into 2024 so kudos to you for that i'm also going to share when i was originally approached to do the summit um the company it's called health means they said you need to do about 35 to 40 interviews and i'm going to be honest i was like yeah i could probably do 25 and we'll figure out what happens after that <laughs> which i don't think they would have been happy with i probably would have been content with um, but to have pulled off 55 and then, you know, some we'll, we'll, we'll mention it here soon, but you know, some of the big names that I ended up getting on this, uh, on this longevity health summit. Um, I I've been saying, if you had asked me, you know, three months ago, Hey, and we'll, 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 we'll drop the names now, Chris, you're going to do a health summit, a longevity health summit. You're going to interview 55 people. And those 55 people are going to include Dr. Gundry, Dave Asprey and Ben Greenfield. Um, and if you don't know those people, then just look them up and you'll realize how big they are. I literally would have said, listen, I'm not the kind of person who likes to set himself up for failure, right? So I'm not going to take on that task. But here I am on the other side of it. And I've just kept pushing and, and, and manifesting in certain ways. Uh, and, and now I've, I've actually accomplished that same thing. 55 experts, Dr. Gundry, Dave Asprey and Ben Greenfield and, and others uh, of significant note. Um, it, it feels amazing. And, and so I know why you do it every day and it's, you know, kudos to you too. Well, thank you. And, you know, it's funny, um, back in 2019, when I started, I never thought of myself as someone who likes to talk or be in front of a camera. Absolutely not. That was not my personality, but I felt like I needed to share information. And I just asked God, I'm like, God, speak through me. Just use me as a vessel. And when I began, I'm like, no one's watching me anyways. I can mess up as much as I want. <laughs> no one <laughs> is watching me. Um, and so it was just kind of one step in front of the other. And just like with you in this pot, this uh, summit, it's like just put one foot in front of the other. Try to do the 25 and look, oh, my God, you got 55. That's amazing. Um, what amazing things. And I am dying to know what you learned from the three people you just mentioned, especially um, Ben Greenfield, Dave Asprey, and Dr. Steve Gundry are three people, especially the first two, who I've been selfishly watching since they came out. And they yeah. were, they, they are the OGs of the podcast in the health, health um, industry. And and I, my son has their books in his room um, that, you know, what they promote is what I align myself with and mostly. So I would love to know what you learn from, from, from those three people. So, so Ben Greenfield, and, and we'll just put some, some teasers out there because the, the reality is it's a, it's a concrete message from, from each of them. And I think um, Ben Greenfield has a more encompassing uh, a, a concept. And I, I'd actually have to go back and look at the notes and think about the very specific things. Um, but I can tell you one that I, I, I think uh, really resonated with me. But but Ben Greenfield, he actually covered six key points really to longevity. Um, I don't remember. I have, probably have it in my notes here somewhere. I don't remember them specifically. But one of them that I thought was really important, right? He's He comes from the fitness side of things, right? So at one point was voted the nation's top uh, personal trainer, right? So that's his thing. He's written 17 books. His most recent book is like Boundless Parenting. I got to listen to about half of that before I interviewed him. Just phenomenal stuff. Not sure I agree with all of it, but phenomenal stuff. The important thing I, thing that I think as a parent is you just need to get a lof, lots of ideas and then you can hone those in with your own uh, standards and figure out like what's the right thing to do. And sometimes it's hard to get the right get ideas, right? It does, you don't necessarily want them all coming from mom and dad because you already know those ideas. You want them from, from outside people. Um, so the concept he had was that you should lay out your work environment so that you have like a kettlebell, you have like a pull-up bar, you're you know, stopping and doing some squats so that if at the end of the day, you got to go to the gym, that was in addition to a good enough workout. And I just thought that's a really good concept. So I do, I did put up my pull-up bar 
Um, and so I'm not doing it enough, but I'm, you know, doing some pull-ups during the day. I don't have a kettlebell at the office. I probably should add a kettlebell at the office, but I think the concept of being acutely aware of your motion, because that's one of the things that came out in longevity. I, I, I got, um, I like to say lucky, um, that I started from the very beginning, asking each expert, give me two to three habits protocols, mindsets, let's call them shortcuts to longevity and a he longer health span that you would share. So I've got that information accumulated. And that's something that's going to be available when you sign up for the summit. We've got a bunch of free PDFs so people can sign up for the summit. Um, and by the way, it's free, right? So this is from uh, um, February 26th through March 3rd, uh, and it's free. And when you sign up, you get these free PDFs of lots of the key tips that that we learned and and so the one of the consistent things that came out of it from each of these experts and not every expert mentioned this because they have their their kind of uh, preferences but movement is so important and and I boil down I personally boil down movement just from my own experience to you've you've got, it doesn't matter what you're doing you probably should do a little bit more, right? Even if you're being consistent and I'm working out regularly, I probably should do a little bit more. And that's, you know, add a kettlebell to the office would make a, make a good difference. But if you're not doing anything, don't start committing to an hour a day. Like that's a, that's a recipe for disaster. Honestly, just commit, you know, I I've seen articles and I, and, and I, I don't know that this is it, but just commit to getting your workout gear on, like just put it on, right? That's a, that's a step because often what happens is like, I'm not going to work out, but I at least put up, put on my gear. And then you're like, okay, well, I put on my gear. So I got my shorts, I got my tennis shoes, I'm ready to go. Um, and, and so you're like, I might as well go for a five minute, just do a five minute walk. If you're doing nothing, do a five minute walk. And I it, it kind of in the interim, a number of people that I know have had surgeries and the ones who have ended up having surgeries and recovering the fastest are the ones who push themselves to move more. Right. And the, the reality is this makes perfect sense. Your body's trying to heal itself. And if you get blood flow, then you're getting nutrients to those areas of your body, whether you had surgery or not. So this concept just it goes across the board. So I think movement was really important there. Gundry just came out with a book. So you follow him. You've probably seen him launch the book. Um, I actually had a print out of his book um, and they got me a digital copy before it came out. So I was able to read the book in anticipation of, of that particular podcast. And he is just talking gut. It's called Gut Check. And it's just gut biome, gut biome, gut biome, leaky gut, leaky gut, leaky gut. At some point, in my interview, I was like, listen, in your book, you say like, you know, leaky gut equals leaky brain, leaky gut equals leaky heart, leaky gut equals leaky liver, leaky gut equals leaky. Skin. All right, Dr. Gundry, we get it. Leaky gut is a problem. And, and um, uh, your audience probably knows, but maybe it's worth a refresher uh, that that you've got a, a single cell lining in your stomach that is responsible for keeping the food in your stomach and and contaminants, we'll call them and letting the nutrients through into your actual body. So there's a really cool description. A lot of people think they eat it, so now it's in their body. But if you think about a pool noodle and you were to drop a marble through that pool noodle, you have this good concept that, well, that marble has not become part of the foam noodle, right? It's actually just surrounded by the foam noodle. It's not part of the foam, no foam noodle. And that's how we are, right? When food goes through our system, from our mouth to our anus, it's actually not in our body. It's surrounded by our body and it gets into our body through that single cell wall. Some, one of the experts describe it as like a cheesecloth where only certain particles can get through. So when you have a leaky gut, you have these, and, and Gundry talks about lectins regularly that have created holes in that single cell wall that surrounds your gut. And now uh, uh, protein particles, lectins are getting into your actual blood system. And what that causes, this was also covered by Dr. Tom O'Brien. He wrote the book Autoimmune Fis Fix. What that causes is those proteins, your body tends to identify as kind of your weak point. So maybe your weak point is your heart or your liver or whatever your kidneys and those proteins tend to look like those proteins of your heart, kidney, or liver, or, or, 
or like those cells. And so you get this autoimmune reaction and it actually starts uh, uh, attacking your heart, kidney or, or, or liver. And so you got to seal this leaky gut. That's the cause of all of these problems. And it wasn't just Gundry. It wasn't just uh, Tom O'Brien. It was probably five other experts really honed in on that. And every expert, I, I probably ended up asking every expert, you know, how important is the gut biome for whatever your area of expertise? And the answer is uh, unequivocally extremely important. Um, uh, before you go on, yeah. I want to just emphasize, I mean, anyone who does my programs or my protocols know it's all about gut. My rock bottom, I was in the GI doctor. They were giving me no answers. And I had leaky gut. I had Crohn's disease, colitis. I had acne, hair falling out, so many issues. And it was all stemming from the gut. And it's, you know, these foods, what I dive in deeper um, with my clients on top of what Gundry says about lectins is the sulfur and the oxalate food groups mm. that can disrupt the gut. And those foods could have been healthy for you four years ago before the spike protein hit all of us and disrupted the fat and protein metabolism in our liver and the sulfur detoxification pathways. I had a, a client just email me her list of supplements she's taking and she has so much arthritic pain and she has thyroid issues and all that, but she's taking turmeric for her joints. Well, everybody, turmeric is high in oxalates, especially if you're taking it as a supplement and it's all concentrated. And when people are juicing and they're juicing spinach and kale, you've got all of these oxalates and sulfur vegetables that are concentrated. And that's not the way nature intended us to eat them, right? Though our ancestors didn't have juicers and blenders. They had they had one celery stick that said, okay, enough fiber. I don't need any more celery. We share that for the family. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So all of these things, it, it is all about the gut because I know you on a high protein diet right now. Well, that protein's not doing you any good. If you've got leaky gut and you can't break down that protein and actually turn it into amino acids to go to your bicep muscles that you're using your kettleball with. Right. Yeah, so. Yeah. It's this all. So what Gundry's telling you complements what Ben Greenfield's talking about and what you're doing in the gym. You can't yep. have one without the other. Right. And I wanted to just give a little um, shout out to the, the workout. And uh, because there are a lot of people out there that don't really work out and they don't know where to start <clears throat> every morning. Depending despite how I feel. I put on my hat backwards and I put on my gloves and my kids hate the fact that I wear weightlifting gloves. They hate it. It's embarrassing. And they're probably totally embarrassed that I'm outing myself right now. <laughs> but once I put those on, I, that's my uniform telling my brain that it's time to work out. And sometimes that workout is going to be amazing. And sometimes it's not. Yeah. And it's me stretching, yeah. but I make that time for myself. I put on my uniform to switch my brain into knowing it's workout time. It's my physical time. And if I can't really actually lift a ton of weights or do cardio, I will stretch and I will be mindful of what's going on in my body. So that hour is my physical workout, regardless of what it looks like. So I just wanted to say that. So if you're listening and you're like, okay, I know I need to exercise. I don't know where to start. Do what Chris says, just five minutes, but make there be a trigger, make there be your, you know, whether it's a special set of tennis shoes that you have on or a shirt, go out and buy a new workout outfit. If that's going to make you feel better, but just something to move you one step closer to that good habit. Yeah. And then as you start to feel better from that, you're you're actually going to start to do more. Right. So you get your five to ten. And I can I can share the story. Um, I played I played semi-professional soccer after college. I played college soccer. So I've always used to training and my my go to first run. So if I hadn't trained for a couple of weeks, I would just go do three miles. And then typically I would do three miles at a minimum. And uh, during the pandemic. I, and, and what that manifested as is maybe 
one to three times a week, I was jogging three miles. And during the pandemic, my wife decided to actually run just two miles, right? I wasn't running with her yet, but she would go for 20 minutes every single day. And I'm like, well, I can do 20 minutes. Let me just join her and maybe I'll continue my threes or whatever. And what I realized is the time commitment and maybe even the pain, right, of, of the three miles stopped me from doing three miles every day. But now I was doing two miles every single day, right? So it's about a 20 minute workout to do some stretching afterwards. And so that time constraint. So be careful about going for too much time because that can be the thing that stops you better to work for five minutes a day than zero, obviously. And then 10 minutes a day is better than five, but, and better than zero. But if 10 minutes gets you in, hopefully this is not the case, but if 10 minutes gets you to go like, ah, I don't really want to do something for 10 minutes, go back to five, like do at least that. And there's more value in doing daily exercise than one, one burst of exercise. So 50 minutes once a week is not as good actually as 10 minutes, five times a week, right? It's, it's the, the, the practice of getting your, your blood flowing on a regular basis. You mentioned some, some challenges and I, I hadn't really thought about this with, with turmeric, um, that in the oxalates and turmeric that could be solved by taking a more refined version and just taking curcumin, right? Is that, is, is that your understanding or no? That's not my understanding. I, I look to liquid biocell collagen for joints, um, reducing the oxalates in general, reducing the inflammation in the body. And typically people see a big improvement. And that's where, and also the thyroid, the thyroid is, is related to arthritic pain as well, because you have swelling in the joints and inflammation throughout the body because the lymph isn't working. The thyroid's not moving things. You're constipated. You just have to think that with the thyroid health, it's not just about metabolism and um, movement through, you know, the fat burning. It's about liquid in the body and getting the circulation throughout the body as well. So. Um, with people with arthritic pain, and I go into this on my website and I've done podcasts on it, but you want to look to protein, getting rid of the carbs, getting rid of the inflammatory foods, getting rid of the oxalates and the sulfur, um, supplementing with liquid biocell collagen and um, reduce and intermittent fasting because that's going to heal the gut and reduce st systemic inflammation throughout the body. I think there's a one expert that I interviewed. Um, uh, her her name is Indira. It, she had severe um, rheumatoid arthritis and ended up, you know, had, talked about that journey, talked about inflammation, talked about inflammaging, um, and really shared something that I was kind of not aware of. You probably are is AIP, the autoimmune protocol which mm -hmm. is they, they bill it as a diet, but it's not really a diet. It's a protocol and it's an elimination diet where you get to some baseline where you've gotten rid of everything. And I don't know what that, I, I'd actually be interested to know what that is. I'm assuming it's like a bone broth or something. And you're doing that long enough to allow your gut lining to heal, uh, to allow the inflammation, systemic inflammation to go down. And then you start adding things in. And I think this is kind of a, a exciting or really good, maybe uh, can set people at ease is the fact that, okay, so she's Indian heritage. I was like, well, I'm assuming, and she mentioned specifically that that rice was one of her triggers. Rice was something that she was sensitive to. And we could talk about sensitive versus allergic because these are very different things. Um, and so kind of as I was wrapping up that interview, I was like, so can you eat rice? Because like, if you, if you grew up Indian, like you eat rice. And she goes, yeah, I just can't eat it as often. Right. So you can get your body back to a, a state where you can enjoy those things. I think some of the people don't even want to go down the path because like, well, if I do that, then I'm never going to get to have a cookie again or, or whatever. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about get yourself to the right place and then still in, in significant moderation, probably to where you were. But you can still enjoy those things. And I think that's very um, uplifting. So what you're saying is really important for everyone to understand because when you are a, when you are eating processed foods and the standard American diet and you've got pains and things, some people don't even know that they don't feel good because mm -hmm. they're so numb, 
right? They don't know they have bloat because they have bloat 100% of the time. They just think they're carrying extra weight. They don't know they have inflammation. I've had people go through my Ascent Diet Cleanse saying, oh, I'm just doing it because my husband's doing it. And two weeks in, oh my gosh, Sarah, I didn't realize I had all these problems, but they're all gone <laughs> because the, the joint pain's gone and the inflammation's gone and all of that. Well, this is the other thing. As healthy as I am with the food I eat and the supplements I take and the exercise, and I'm unfortunately very boring and I stick to my routine. Um, <laughs> but if I get um, exposed to a virus, and maybe I don't get sick, but it trips up some inflammatory responses in my body, it might make it so that salmon, which is a very healthy fish, is too fatty and too high histamine for my body to handle if I'm fighting a flu bug, mm. right? So it's not just if you've healed your gut, it's your current state of health. Are you under too much stress? That is going to take your digestion down. That's going to make certain foods react differently than maybe they did a week ago. You might have been able to eat things um, in August that you weren't able to eat during the holidays because of the family stress and the holiday season and all of that. And also the weather. Our ancestors didn't eat the same foods in summer as they mm. did in winter, right? Okay. And we've got foods coming from all across the globe and we're supposed to eat the foods that are in our backyard, right? Locally. Yep. So there's all of these things that kind of go into what is fueling the body and reducing the inflammation and then detoxing the toxins. The two causes of accelerated aging, insulin resistance and toxicity. And we're at a level of um, you know, radiation and the foods having the halogens in them, the fluoride, bromide, chlorine. Um, some of these toxins aren't even allowed or legal in Europe and we are being fed them daily in our air. All of these things are backing up our livers and our kidneys. And so it's causing um, all of these functions in our body to not work so well and cleanse those toxins and then be able to break down the foods and do what they used to do with them just even three or four years ago. There's been a huge shift. So we are truly salmon swimming upstream right now. And that's why it's so important to do all the things that we're talking about to um, to succeed in your longevity, um, you know, goals. And and it's funny because people are dying at a higher rate, right? Mortality is increasing. But you and I are here trying to live to what, 150? What's your goal, Chris? Uh, so my goal for the longest time was tw 125, right? And um, I, you know, I asked another question I asked all the experts was what was their goal? And then how long do they think humans could live? One of the interesting facts about that is only two of the experts gave the same answer for those two questions, which is very interesting. I think you didn't even give the same answer, right? It's just how, how we're thinking about aging is so corrupted by, by living in an infirm state and corrupted by what we believe. So uh, most people were like, uh, you know, I want to get, you know, into the eighties, maybe hundreds, but humans can probably live to 120. So why the gap? And that was, that was consistent. Um, I think more consistent was, I don't care how long I live. I just want to be productive and healthy and mentally sound uh, until I'm done. And then, and then that's a, that's a good story. Um, but, but I, I thought that was interesting. I, my answer to that same question, you know, how long do I want to live and how long can we live? I probably bumped it up to 150, right? I, I think that sounds fair, but that's given our knowledge today, right? I think just what you and I are doing, um, just with, with the technologies that are coming on board now, um, that's actually going to get us to, to 150. That's probably going to get us, let's be realistic. It's probably going to get us to 120. But I think, well, here's here's the fact. I'll just ask you this question because it's it's probably a little overwhelming. In 1950, medical information doubled every 50 years, right? Last year, how quickly did medical information? So we're talking about 
all the research papers that are on there, all the research scientists around the world contributing to the collection of, of medical knowledge last year. So in 1950, it was 50 years. Last year, 2023, how quickly was medical knowledge doubling? Just throw out a number. I would say on a monthly basis. Yeah, 73 days. 73 days. And then I did a little calculation. If we just go out 10 years at the rate of acceleration of that, it should be about 1.5 years. Think about what AI has to say about medical information and which tests we should be doing and which tests are going to be successful. Like this is we're in this revolution. So I think the answer today is probably my still 125. The answer in five years is probably not 125. Right. And my goal is different than my answer right now, which is my goal is I think that there's a possibility we can live forever. And and I love what 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 um, David Sinclair says about, hey, the reality is, is I could take a skin cell from you, Sarah, and I could go make a clone of Sarah like I can make a baby Sarah. So everything, all of the information necessary to have a youthful Sarah is in every cell of your body, not just some of them right in every cell. So like, we just got to be able to turn the, he calls it the information, um, the, the, the information theory of aging, where we've got the information, it's getting corrupted. It's not getting utilized properly, but the information is there. We just got to figure out how to utilize, to, to, to get our bodies to utilize that information. And he's doing it in labs where he's taking, you know, groups of rats and he's aging them and then he's unaging them, right? So they're turning gray and then they're turning not gray again. They're getting not able to run on the treadmill as long and then you know switching that switch the other direction and now they're able to run on the treadmill that long so i mean those technologies are are, are just around the corner I, I, it's it's really exciting and we talk a lot about those technologies um you know really through through all these 55 experts on on that summit well i'm sure dave asprey who we haven't touched on yet is one of those people because he is the guru in biohacking where where did he see technology and longevity connect? So I think um, he was a very interesting interview. He's so knowledgeable. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with with Ben Greenfield, with uh, and mostly because of so much content is available. Ben Greenfield, Dr. Gundry and Dave Asprey. I spent about three hours like you want to do a good interview for those. And and in fact, in my kind of opening uh, for for Ben Greenfield, I'm like, what would you do if you're like, how would you feel about, you know, interviewing this guy who drops knowledge bombs left and right? And then how responsible, how nervous would you be in like trying to deliver a lot of value from from this guy? Because uh, there's a lot, just a lot of information out there. Right. So Dave Asprey, uh, father of biohacking, um, also a business genius. I mean, he turned a coffee recipe into I'm um, guessing a hundred million dollar, literally a coffee recipe, bulletproof coffee into a hundred million dollar business, right? Now there's supplements or whatever, but, but the foundation bulletproof coffee of the business is a, is a coffee recipe, right? And it, it, maybe he didn't even have the products on day one. That's really genius. He's doing some of the most cutting edge stuff and in, in preparation for him, I found a, a, a mind Valley interview that he had done just not too too long prior to my interviewing him. And he's at like 9% body fat, right? So he's got a full on six pack. He says he works out 15 minutes a week, <laughs> a week. Um, and I don't know if that includes both the cardio and the, the strength training. Um, but if it doesn't include one or the other, then the total's only 30 minutes right? Because his concept around cardio is you can go run for 30 minutes or you can sprint, right? Get yourself to zone five cardio, which isn't even cardio, and then relax as quickly as possible. And you can do that three times and you can actually do that in about 10 minutes. Um, and that gives you better VO2 max improvements over these tw 10, 20, 30 minute, you know, runs that you're doing. And certainly, you know, my wife and I typically, we're not doing it this year, but typically run a half marathon it's actually not that good for overall cardio. I'm getting more value out of the sprints that I'm doing than I'm than I'm getting out of the uh, you know these long you know ten mile runs or whatever. Um, so so some of that's pretty amazing. Propriate propriation or some word very close to that is your body's understanding, right? So you may you may pick up a a weight, right? And when that weight wiggles, your body's aware of 
what what energy reserves it needs to have to control that weight, right? So your body won't, like you could probably push a hundred pounds, right? Nice and smooth and easy, but your body won't let you pick up a hundred pounds because you can't manage a hundred pounds if it wiggles and it's always wiggling, right? Like we can't be um, that, that solid. So he's, he works with some equipment and he's actually building out a franchise where this equipment is available. It's called the human upgrade labs. Uh, and, and so the technology is where you're pushing. And so you can push three, five, three to five times harder than you could in the gym with a free weight. And so you're getting significantly better benefits in 15 minutes a week. <laughs> so um, I think he's doing some of the most cutting edge stuff and, 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 and had some interesting conversations. It, it was interesting in the middle of me preparing and interviewing people they launched the HealthSpan X Prize. I don't know if you're familiar with X Prize. Mm -hmm. So a guy named Peter Diamantes, he actually wrote the book with Tony Robbins called Life Force. It's one mm -hmm. of the kind of longevity books that's out there right now. And Peter Diamantes created X Prize, which is at the, the, it's most known for the million dollar prize for it, the first space company to get a space rocket into space bring it down. And I think within 24 hours, launch that same rocket again, right? So moving the technology pushing. Now, the million dollar reward is nothing compared to the cost of getting something launched and right, like, it's just a it's just a badge of honor. Well, they came out with their highest award, which is $101 million for the to the first organization that extends life by 10 years with a goal of 20, which is kind of interesting. So I, I asked Dave about this because he's actually been an early investor in some of the X prizes. Um, uh, there, there are some other ties that, that he has. So he, he certainly knows Sergey Young, who's, who's the guy who was the first investor in the health span prize. And, and I was asking like, cause you know, his goal is 180, right? Like that's, that's, that's his goal. The one that he talks about the most. Um, you know, what do you think about a health span prize that's looking to extend life by 10 to 20 years? It's like, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's the wrong goal. <laughs> like maybe that's the wrong goal. Um, so so that was a absolutely a fascinating interview. And he gets into all sorts of details about, you know, what you should be focusing on, what people are not focusing on. Um, and and yeah, fascinating interview with, you know, the father of biohacking. Yeah, it's all really interesting. So from all of these experts, what were the biggest surprises? So um, one of the surprises was, you know, what what do I see at this point as a as a limiting factor? Um, and I had uh, two interviews talking about stem cells. So I think actually stem cells are a limiting factor. Um, Dr. Joy Kong and a, a, a guy by the name of Christian Drapeau, I have, I have his book here. Um, he's got a, 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 like a phenomenal product, but stem cells are, and it, it's interesting because I felt like I knew this. And so the fact that at some point medical community didn't know this is surprising that stem cells are the repair cells in our body, right? So stem cells typically come from your red marrow and your bones and they're, your body releases them at certain points. So there's triggers that will cause them to release. And when it releases them, they start floating around trying to find muscle cells or heart cells or liver cells to replace, right? These are the cells that can, um, that can be any kind of cell in your body. And apparently at some point they didn't know that the stem cells were the repair mechanism. I, that seems a little crazy. Uh, by the way, in, in preparing for that interview with Christian, it was kind of cool. I found a video that he was uh, associated with where they took a, a rat heart. And then they dissolved it. It was out of the rat, obviously. And they dissolved all the muscle. I don't know what chemical they used, but dissolved all the muscle off of the, the rat heart. So you just had this kind of translucent shape of a heart. That's the, the whatever membranes were there. Maybe some of it's fascia, right? And then they just poured stem cells on it. And those stem cells turned into a heart and started beating, right? Which is just fascinating. That's what they are. Um, if you think about your own muscle tissue, it's getting replaced four times a year. So every quarter, all of your muscle cells have been replaced, right? 
and we kind of know this, it's probably most apparent on our skin. We all know we're sloughing off skin cells regularly, but your muscle cells are getting replaced and it's important that they come from stem cells. So in the conversation with Christian and, and I think to a lesser degree with Dr. Kong, um, you, I became aware that the, uh, the red marrow shrinks with age. And there was even some talk that with Jean Clement, she's the oldest living person. I may be messing up her name ever so slightly. She lived to 122. Um, that all of the cells that were in her body, right, because the stem cells are replenishing them, were from one line of stem cells. And it's true that our red marrow shrinks as we age. So if at some point our red marrow is done providing stem cells, then we don't have the repair mechanism anyway. So it's in my mind, that's the most limiting factor. Now, there's already, I, I think there's probably already solutions. Dr. Joy Kong does more like stem cell injections and you can get stem cells from other places. Uh, and so you may end up in a, you know, as we, as we get to 120 and beyond, we might need to be in a dialysis situation where we have to go get stem cell uh, in, you know, uh, uh, in, intravenously uh, in order to, you know, keep, keep that, mon uh, that body replenishment. But that was one of the things that that really surprised me. Well, stem cells, um, just personally, I use the stem cell activation patches from Life. Excuse me, mm -hmm. um, from LifeWave. But also, I've had Dr. Tato on the show, and what he does is he extracts your blood, Chris, and he he spins it and takes out these very small embryonic stem cells and he has it patented these stem cells have been dormant in our body since the day we are born so they're unadulterated from all the toxins that we've been talking about and then you spin it and you put it back into your body and he uses laser therapy to direct the stem cells to where you want them to go because the body's going to see those stem cells and send them to the inflammation or where your body thinks that it needs to go. But you might want to go after your vision or your hearing mm. or your hair and not so much your liver like your body does. Um, and, and it's I've actually done it. It is amazing. Um, and that is the future. It is stem cells. My mom had, she fell off a horse, 70 or 80 years old. She is not making stem cells. She has a broken pelvis. She is going to heal much slower than you or I would yep. with that same injury. So it is, um, it is, that is the limiting factor. I definitely agree. And it's also connected to telomeres and some of the things that we've talked about, you know, your your exercise, the food that you eat, the food you eat, whether it's good or bad, is information in the body. It's either killing you or fueling you. So you have to you have to be conscientious of all this stuff now more than ever. I mean, 30 years ago, before 1980, there wasn't really processed foods. So regardless if you cared about your diet, you were probably eating whole foods, right? Yeah. And you didn't have to think about it. Whereas now you're looking at packaged ketogenic or protein bars or something, it's still processed foods and it's still information and it might be the wrong information for your body. So I can't believe we're out of time. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, um, the summit is February 26th through March 3rd. Super excited for I think me. you're going to have, you're going to have a link for it, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have a link. We'll put it in the show notes. And we'll send out, um, you know, ways to, to, to um, join and get all the freebies. And, of course, we've got to give a shout out to My Vital C as part of the longevity recipe. I've been taking this how many years now, Chris? I, I don't even remember. Four, four? like Four years. And I talked about four years ago that I had two um, gray hairs. I still have, I might have four now. <laughs> I, I just had but who's my, counting? <laughs> I'm not dying my hair. Just a little highlights. But I'm 48 years old, and I'm my goal is to never have to dye my gray hair. That is my goal because I'm trying cool. to reverse the you, age through all of these processes. So you look great. That's for sure. 
Well, thank you, Chris. And thank you for being here. And thanks everyone else for joining us today. If I can help you with your health issues, contact me directly through the website, sarahbandhealth.com. Happy to put together a protocol for you. Join the free group coaching on Telegram with the link below. There is no downside. I teach you on a daily basis with tips and tools to enhance your health. And you will be a part of an amazing like-minded group to support you on your journey in addition to truly taking control of your health. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Accelerated Health Products across over 100 channels under Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. My goal is to reach everyone on earth with eyes to see and ears to hear my message of healing. So help me with that goal. Share this podcast with a few of your friends who may need my help. And you can join us every week, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, and find all the supplements and everything we've talked about at sarahbantel.com. Use coupon WELCOME10 for 10% off site-wide. Thanks again for joining us here and have a great week. Thank you.